was expected. And really, they started out real hot this year, but things just the 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 offensive production and the strikeouts and guys really couldn't get it together. And you brought in the Upton brothers together and and reunited them, and that thing really didn't work out. So uh, BJ really struggled all year long. So the Braves, I don't know, man. I, I, you just looked at this offense and you thought that they had the power and they had the players. They had the star power. Okay, we talk about Justin Hay, Justin uh, Upton and B.J. Hayward. Uh, B.J. Upton and Justin Hayward. Uh, damn it. Uh, hey, you have all those players. You have all these players. Jason Hayward. Damn it, I couldn't get that out. You got Jason Hayward and, and Freddie Freeman and all of those guys. You just... You talk about an offense, a potent offense, but in baseball, guys go on tremendous streaks and losing streaks, and that seemingly is what happened to the Braves this year, so they are done. I don't know what kind of changes are going to be made. We'll see. Uh, like I said, Frank Wren has come under considerable uh, fire for what's happened in the dysfunctional offense, and Frank Wren is the GM of the, uh, of the Braves if you're not from Atlanta. So we'll see what happens with the Braves. They kind of like messed up the – the whole five play that we had going on this way. We, we, we were trying to get wins from the Falcons, from Georgia Tech, from the Georgia Bulldogs, and four play, actually. And then the Atlanta Braves, you know, just try to keep themselves in contention for the postseason, but it's not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. The Braves fell short this weekend. That was really the only downside to this weekend. All the other ATL teams did their damn thing. I mean, in a big, big way. A huge way. So that's that's some good stuff right there. 404-382-0338 is the number to the show. A lot of great college football this past weekend. I mentioned uh, also in the NFL some great games as well. I want to give a ball award to Nick Foles, the quarterback for the Philadelphia Eagles. Nick Foles continues to impress. 27 for 41, 325 yards, three TDs, and a win against the Washington Redskins. And it seems like, you know, when Nick Foles came in, when Mike Vick got hurt last year, people didn't expect a lot from him. They didn't know, you know, how good of a quarterback he was coming out of Arizona. He was kind of a question mark. And Nick Foles can play this game. It seems like every week you read a stat line of, you know, 27 for 30-something, 300 yards. And I don't know how much of it has to do with Chip Kelly's offense. It, it, it probably has a lot to do with it as well. And, and people were excited about seeing Michael Vick in that offense last year. But I don't know how much of it has to do with that. But Nick Foles has proven to be a good quarterback, a sustainable quarterback in the NFL. How long can it last? If you're a Philadelphia Eagle fan, if you're an Eagle fan, do you believe in Nick Foles for the long term? That, that's a question that I think a lot of people have out there is, do you believe Nick Foles is your quarterback of the future. Seriously. Because this guy has played fantastic. And when you talk about top quarterbacks in the league. It seems like his name doesn't come up a lot. Because he's so young one. Because he wasn't much heralded coming out of college. But he just continues to produce. And once again I know Chip Kelly's offense. And his dynamic offense. And his up pace fast offense. Where they call like a zillion plays a game. Has a lot to do with it. But you got to start giving some credit where credit is due. So ball award. Goes to Nick Foles. And also, let me give a, a, a ball award to uh, to Dallas. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and give him a ball award. And I'm going to give him a Buster Award to the St. Louis Rams. And kind of like the same thing I mentioned a little bit earlier. Is the fact that bad teams find a way to lose games. And St. Louis and Clemson. Or I'm not going to even necessarily say bad teams. Teams that are lesser than their opponents find a way to lose games. And that's what St. Louis did with a 21-point lead this past weekend. They find a way to lose it. <laughs> they find a way to lose to Dallas. And I know the Dallas Cowboy fans were about to start jumping off buildings because, like I said earlier, and you're listening to the Doug Stewart Show, this is one of those games that you had penciled in where Dallas should have won. Uh, and they did. But they really shouldn't have. <laughs> they really shouldn't have. Okay? They skidded by by the grace of God and got this win yesterday. And they need all of the wins they can get. And I said it at the start of the year. I don't think Dallas is going to win more than five games. I just don't think they're going to win more than five games because they can't stop anybody. And the Falcons are kind of like in the same boat. But I think the Falcons, uh, they're preaching this toughness around camp. And I think Mike Smith has got these guys playing much tougher. They look fantastic, obviously, this past weekend, uh, this past Thursday night against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. But 
Dallas and, and the Falcons are kind of like playing the same type game where they got to outscore their opponents. Simple as that. They're not going to beat anybody by stopping them by this, you know, this defensive type game, something that the, the Baltimore Ravens or the Pittsburgh Steelers traditionally implement where they just beat you up defensively. The Cowboys and the Falcons are going to have to outscore everybody. Okay? They are. DeMarco Murray's been running great for the Cowboys, and that's what they really need to, to do a lot more of, and it's been successful for them over the last couple of weeks. And, and, and you've been saying this for the last couple of years. Jason Garrett loves to pass the football, but you got to use your weapons. you got to establish the run. You can't let Tony Romo throw the damn ball 50, 60 times. That's just not going to – you're not going that far with that, with that approach at all. OK, so, you know, I think the Falcons have to outscore teams because their defense is a, is a defense with a bunch of young guys, um, guys that, that are very unproven, guys that you don't look at as like pro bowler type players. The same thing with the Dallas Cowboys. They, their defense isn't going to be able to stop anybody. So you, you're basically left with running the ball with DeMarco Murray um, or letting Tony Romo throw it a ton of times. and You don't want to do that. And you know what Tony Romo does when the. When the pressure is on. Now, yesterday the pressure was on. He made a tremendous comeback uh, from 21 points down once again. But they they do that every once in a while. Tony Romo has a good game every once in a while. Even, you know, the sun shines on the dog's ass every once in a while. But you can't believe that, the, that you're going to win a lot of football games by letting Tony Romo just stand back there and gun it around, kind of like Drew Brees does in New Orleans. I don't, I don't think you're going to get that. I don't think you're going to get that at all. So, We'll see what happens with these two teams this year. The Falcons actually traveled to Minnesota this week. And Teddy Bridgewater is going to be starting. Matt Castle got hurt this weekend. So Teddy Bridgewater is going to get a start. Uh, so that so that saga starts in, in Minneapolis with Teddy Bridgewater. It's drafted late in the first round. This was a guy who many people thought would be the first pick in the draft if he would have came out last year, the year before last. And... Uh, fell a little bit in the draft, but a fantastic player has all the tools that can make him great. This is a guy that was a fantastic player coming out of high school. I think he went to Northwestern High School in Miami, Florida. Uh, highly recruited, uh, one of the best players coming out of out of uh, high school, and went to Louisville and did big things, put up huge numbers. But what's going to happen next week with his first time as a starter in the NFL? We'll see what he's made of next week. And the Falcons are going to get after him and. and the Falcons are going to throw the ball. The Falcons are going to score a lot of points. Uh, I, I make the argument that the Falcons may have the best wide receiving core in the NFL. Y you know, uh, when you talk about Roddy White, uh, Julio Jones, Harry Douglas. Harry got nicked up this weekend, uh, but his test came back negative. So Harry should be okay, we're thinking. But when you talk about that offense and the three-headed monster at, 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 at running back and, and Jaquiz Rogers and and Freeman and uh, and those guys, you, you're talking about a team that's going to put up a lot of points. And Matt Ryan, let me give him a ball award as well, as a matter of fact, right now. Haven't talked enough about Matt Ryan. Matt's looking fantastic this year. Absolutely fantastic. And they've talked about it all preseason long. And since the season has started, that Matt was going to run the ball a little bit more. He was going to be more elusive and try to get out of the pocket a lot more. And it's working. He looks fantastic this year. Right now, he's on pace to be, you know, in the conversation for MVP. And I know a lot of people aren't sold on Matt Ryan. And, you know, the NFL channel did this top, you know, quarterbacks. They rated the quarterbacks last year. And I think Matt fell in the, the back third of that, that conversation. But Matt Ryan's a solid quarterback. Never really had a problem with Matt Ryan. I think his arm strength has increased since he's coming to the NFL. Um, out of Boston College. I think he's smart. He's heady. Um, and Arthur Blank obviously is going to build his organization around him. He has been building his organization around him. So we'll see what happens with the Falcons this year and how far they can get. But the only issue is the defense. But I don't even know in today's NFL if, if that's really that big of an issue. You saw the Saints, um, who had a lot of takeaways, but they weren't that great defensively go to a Super Bowl. I think they throw it around. The offenses are so wide open. It's hard to just catch up. It's hard to catch up with the offenses in the league. The, the rules and the way that you can't touch the receivers. The offenses are a definite advantage right now. I mean, uh, really. 
And I know the league probably likes that because offense sells tickets, but they always say defense wins championships. <laughs> okay? Defense wins championships. And uh, it's going to be tough for a team like the Falcons or for the Dallas Cowboys to win a Super Bowl. They may progress. They may win a lot of games. I think the Falcons are going to win a lot of games. I got the Falcons winning 10 games this year. And some people think that's too much, think that their deficiencies are going to come back to haunt them at some point. I don't know about that. I like their offense. I like them to score with anybody. If they can stay healthy, I like the Falcons to score with absolutely anybody in the league. In the league. You know, you, you can't name me another team uh, with with three better receivers. Uh, Stevie Johnson, I talked about this team a little bit earlier. Stevie Johnson and uh, uh, Bolden and <clears throat> Michael Crabtree uh, out in San Francisco. They're, they're probably a good competition for the Falcons, but I don't know. I don't think so. I still don't think so. Um, you got you got a great team here, man, in the Falcons. And, and the interesting thing about it is, is you don't have Tony Gonzalez, and it seems like Matt spreading the ball around to his wide receivers more. It seems like Matt was very reliant on Tony Gonzalez over the last couple of years. He was kind of like his bailout. Uh, nobody's open, or they're kind of open. I just throw it to Tony. <laughs> you know, and that's not a dumb thing. That's a very smart thing, to be honest with you. I'll just throw it to Tony. So. Uh, I, I think that he's spreading the ball around now better. He's getting the ball to his receivers, and uh, I think he's more comfortable. He looks he looks great. He looks great this year, so we'll see how much the Falcons can do this year. All right, 404-382-0338 is the number to the show, and people are texting me and on Twitter. And I got a million, I mean a million tweets and and Tex, uh, welcome back. Good to hear you voice, my man. Good to hear your voice, my man. I ended up giving up my Sears subscription, but y'all got it. And y'all pulled it out of the air. Shouts out to Chess C. Thanks for the text or the tweet. And, uh, yeah, a lot of people, we were on Sirius XM probably seven or eight years ago. And our relationship ended. <laughs> and so we got all of these emails and these texts saying, you know, uh, well, I, I, I got my serious subscription to listen to the stews, so I'm canceling it. And so they lost a lot of, I'm, I'm sure they lost a lot of subscriptions, but we're back right now. I'm back right now. Thank you for listening, Chessie. We really appreciate it. Continue to tell people about the show. Can people continue to pass the word and uh, and listen and have fun, man? That's that's all we're doing is, that, that's something that I think that a lot of these shows don't do a good job of. A lot of these shows take themselves too serious. A lot of these guys on national radio, a lot of these guys that work for the puppet factory, <laughs> okay, uh, they, they take themselves too serious. It's sports. You're supposed to have a good time. You're supposed to have a lot of fun. And that's what I'm going to do on this show. That's what I'm going to continue to preach on this show. And damn it, we're going to do it. <laughs> we are going to do it on this show. You best believe that. All right? 404 382 0338 is the number to the show. Another ball award goes out to Marcus Mariota. I think he's probably right now the leader for the Heisman Trophy uh, in the house. At 329 uh, this past weekend, he threw for 329 yards, five TDs. Uh, I think if you look at all the college football players right now, and it's early, I think they're in week four in the college football season. I think if you talk about Heisman, guys that, that are in the conversation for the Heisman Trophy, uh, Golston for Notre Dame, um, Kenny Hill, Kenny Trill Hill. I don't know if that name's even official yet, but Kenny Trill Hill uh, had another great game on yesterday, 322 yards passing. Gurley, obviously the running back for the University of Georgia, just busting folks' head to the white meat. Um, Jameis Winston, he's probably still a candidate. I don't know how much because I'm sure he's rubbing a lot of the Heisman Trophy uh, voters the wrong way. So I don't know. He he might have separated himself from the rest of those guys that I just mentioned because he's just he's very volatile right now. And I don't know if guys, uh, especially the older guys that vote for the Heisman Trophy, are, are feeling Jameis Winston. But because he won it last year, because he's on the a team that hadn't lost, I think, what, 19 games, and they won the national championship last year. I think you probably still have to keep him in that conversation. Um, he is a fantastic player. He is a fantastic player. So um, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. But right now, I think those are the guys, when you talk about the Heisman Trophy, uh, they all had great games this past weekend. But I, as I mentioned, I think Marcus Mariota is probably 
the lead candidate right now because he's just throwing up crazy numbers and all of these quarterbacks.